everyone and Katribu. I'm Dina Ventura. And I'm Francine Marquez, taking and over Jojo Silvestre, who's out gallivanting somewhere in an exotic place. <laughs> and this, this is, is Spotlight. Spotlight. <laughs> Hi, Dina. Hi, Francine. How are you I'm today? I'm good. Good to see you in real time. Oh, <laughs> You've been gone for quite a yes, while. Yes, I've been to exotic places also. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but you know, this afternoon we have a very interesting guest. Yes, I know she's that. She's a lawyer, but mm -hmm. she's not just any lawyer because mm -hmm. she's tackling a line of work that's quite new, I think, in the in the global stage. And very relevant to the times. Yes. So, allow me to introduce. Okay. For today's episode of Spotlight, we have a significant figure in the finance mm -hmm. industry, the spokesperson of the Department of Finance, Assistant Secretary for Climate Change Finance and Disaster Risks, okay, Philippine Sherpa representative to the co-action of Finance Ministers for Climate Action mm -hmm. and representative of the Secretary of Finance in the Advisory Council of the Principles of Sustainable Finance. Wow. That's quite a mouthful. Yes. And yes. we hope to... Uh, quite some achievements as well. Yes. Please welcome Assistant Secretary of the Department of Finance, ASEC Paula Alvarez. Hi, Hello, good afternoon. ASEC. Welcome to Spotlight. Yes. yes. Hi, Dina. Hi, Francine. Thank you for sharing your time. You know, you've been very busy. Very busy. <laughs> How are you? How, uh, I mean, where are you right now? <laughs> Uh, right now, I'm in the office. Uh, we do have a lot of work, so it's better for us to stay here. Uh, but we are practicing social distancing and uh, we're doing what the IATF also advised. So we're still safe. So, Asek, I'd like to ask a uh, first uh, question. <laughs> what is the state of our economy amidst the uh, pandemic do we have enough are we meeting the supply versus the demand um, actually it would really depend on where you're coming from mm -hmm. of course from the department of finance we have a macroeconomic view of what is happening in the country mm -hmm. our goal of course is to keep the prices steady we don't want to spike up inflation and we need to ensure that uh, we have enough supplies in terms of financial and goods to help our country dur during these times. But of course, even if I tell you that we're doing well internationally, of course, we have a lot of kababayans who are really not doing well because, you know, our unemployment rate um, is increasing because of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. But then again, we need to balance between safety protocols and um, the opening of the market. So, you know, it really depends on where you're coming from. But from our end, uh, we're trying our best to keep, uh, to do our job and to help maintain price stability and to help maintain that we have ample supply of financing, especially with the uh, uh, recovery measures that the government wants to put in place. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that sounded very complicated in my mind. <laughs> No, when you speak of it from a macro point of view, it mm -hmm. only means that we have enough funds. The funds are there, am I right, uh, Asik Alvarez? Yes, Except we have probably the distribution to the various channels down mm -hmm. to the micro level. Okay. <laughs> so Asik, uh, what is the government doing to uh, to fight the COVID nineteen pandemic? Okay, so there are different fronts, no? Uh, just to, to, to break it down so it's not very complicated. Uh, so we do clusters. Okay. So you have the uh, public sector cluster, the health yeah, and social services sector. cluster. Mm -hmm. So nandun yung ating uh, IATF, nandun yung DOH, DSWD, DILG. They do what they can to control the pandemic. So you. Mm -hmm. From the DOF side, ang ginagawa namin is to secure vaccines for the country. So kami nag-aayos ng financing needs. So the reason for this is because, there, number one, may shortage of supply ng vaccines all over the world. Of course, uh, developed countries have first dibs or they get the first, um, the first deliveries. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, relatively, yung nakukuha natin is very small compared to them. But we have a big population and we need access to vaccines. So ang ginagawa namin, we work with multilateral partners like the World Bank, ADB, for them to help us negotiate and secure vaccines at an even price, yung equity. So, you know, we can only pay as much. And uh, with everything that's happening around the world, uh, there, there is really a shrinkage of the global economy. So we need to do something about that. So, ASEC, did we secure any loans just to probably uh, add to the funding for COVID-19? Yes, actually, because, okay, what we need to understand, um, with, the, with the stricter health protocols, we have a lot of businesses that had to close down. Mm-hmm. And because of that, your taxes from businesses and your other collections from other economic activities shrunk. Mm-hmm. So in order for us to acquire vaccines, we negotiated loans which are concessional. Mm-hmm. What this means is our loans have a very good term. So for example, most of our loans are going to be starting on 2025. So it gives us ample time to rebound uh, before we start paying. Next, the reason why we acquired loans in order to fund vaccines is because there is transparency and there is actually a uh, a secure way of knowing that your international multilateral partners will not approve the uh, purchase of vaccines that do not pass international standards. Mm -hmm. So if we do it that way, we are assured. So sure tayo na makikita natin yung, uh, yung process and how much was put into what. Kasi multilateral partner countries, yeah. You can always check ADB, you can always check World Bank, and all the other multilateral partners that we're working with. Mm-hmm. Okay. Could you give us a general idea of how much loans we secured, like, starting when the pandemic started? Um, it depends on which types of loans you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, we update, we keep, we update our, um, we update our Facebook, and our website, you can check it there. So, because you know, our loans are different types. Eh? We have, of course, use infrastructure, ongoing pa rin yung build, build, build. Mm-hmm. Tapos, you, we also have yung budget support. Kasi di ba yung initial pandemic, we needed to secure PPEs, uh, additional equipment. So, a portion also was budget support. Tapos, iba pa yung loan on the procurement of uh, vaccines at saka yung deployment and oculation. So, depending on what you specifically want, dun mo makikita sa ano. So, it, it's very hard if I give you a breakdown. It's going to be very technical. Yes, yes, yes. Unless you want me to go through that. Sure. But what I can imagine is just like a dike with so many holes, you have to patch all the holes <laughs> as quickly as possible. So, parang ganun yung image in my head right now. Asset, what is sustainable finance? We've been, uh, you're an ex, uh, you've held a lot of positions related to managing, handling, probably providing solutions to sustainable finance. What is it exactly? What does it mean? Yes. Okay, so I heard you were talking about uh, some foreign exotic lands for people, <laughs> no? Okay, so sustainable finance is a type of financing being introduced now internationally that puts in its heart environmental, social, and governance standards. Mm -hmm. What this means is yung international funding facilities mo, like for example, uh, capital markets or trust fund uh, managers internationally. So UK, uh, New York, and all the other um, international wealth managers. Mm. Internationally, because the whole world is talking about how we will limit the effects of climate change, mm-hmm. how we need to scale down the rising temperature yes. because of the rising oceans, melting icebergs, mm-hmm. and new biodiversity losses, we need to channel financing towards 
sustainable projects. Oh. Projects that will help us um, manage the environment better, adapt to the changing effects of climate change, mm -hmm. mitigate greenhouse gas emissions, and at the same time, help developing countries achieve their sustainable development goals. So it's not something new. It's how you finance projects. But this time, we want to consider yung environmental, social impact. Like for example, if you do a project in a certain island, hindi dapat naapektuhan yung community. And then governance, is it being run well? Transparent by process? Is there a equal participation of men and women? Are women being targeted? You know, there should be equality. We're, it, it means like we're, we're bringing up the standards mm -hmm. of the types of projects and the types of people who run these projects because you know yung how the world wants to move forward and we need to keep up with them. I know. When did we start doing this in our country? Okay. In the Philippines, we have been part of the Paris Agreement uh, in 2017 when uh, President Duterte signed it into law. But the past administration have been working already, like the DFA, they've been working together with other countries um, with different treaties um, that tackles climate change. So sustainable finance in general, We've been doing it already before, like yung disaster risk financing natin because we're a country highly vulnerable to climate change, di ba? So, na-experience natin 10 to 20 typhoons every year. And just in 2020, we experienced three back-to-back -back super typhoons from October to November alone. So, we're very used to typhoons. We, we try to fund recovery and insurance program to help us cushion yung effects, especially damages to agriculture, damages to infrastructure. But during that time that we were doing it, sustainable finance wasn't mainstream. It, the label, the label or the concept did not exist as much as it does today. Oh, wow. So now we're trying to broaden. Kasi di ba ang dami natin kailangan, especially for tourism. Pag pumunta kang Palawan, minsan rotating brownout. Tapos pag pumunta kang Boracay, yung nangyari dun sa STP. And then pag pumunta ka ng Cebu, sa uh, may ibang islands doon, wala silang fresh water. So how do we help fund this without harming the environment? So doon na papasok yung sustainable finance, which now tinatry natin i-embed the institutions natin, especially because we're already on our way out of this administration. And how are we doing in terms of embedding it in our systems? Um, asset. But before you answer that, uh, we'll pause for a short break. first indoor shopping mall, the world's original thriller, and the first ever Bini Bini pageant. Now a place for your first win, your first catch, your first home, your first big break, your first date, and even your first love. Araneta City, the city of firsts.
Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm Francine Marquez and I'm with my co-host Miss Dina Ventura and we're talking to the very lovely finance ASIC, Paula Alvarez. Before we had our break, you were asking ASIC Alvarez, how are we embedding the concept of sustainable finance into our in different parts uh, yeah. of our maybe local governments? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a very interesting question. So what we're trying to do is we're trying first to harmonize from the different agencies. And what, what does it mean? Um, right now, we're doing interagency, uh, interagency consultations uh, to create a sustainable finance program of the Philippines. Uh, what this means is we look into your policies ng BSP. So Banco Central has their... Uh, to say financing. So they're quite ahead. BSP is actually doing a lot and we're lucky because Governor Ben Jokno is pro-environment. Mm. And his team is really working hard. And then you have the Securities and Exchange Commission. They are the ones who regulate uh, security instruments or uh, yung negotiable instruments like bonds, mm. uh, mga ganyan. So they also adopted yung ASEAN Green Bond Standards. For the other agencies also, MEDA has their circular economy, DENR has their uh, waste facilities, the OE has renewable energy. But what we need to do is to harmonize these policies so that they don't conflict each other and they support each other. So number one, that's how we're trying to embed no, in the institution. We open platforms like the Interagency Coordinating Council. We call it the Green Force or Green Task Force to coordinate these policies. And we're working with the UK government to learn from them and to actually, they're actually helping us uh, because they've already done it in the UK, so they're helping the Philippines on how you can craft your sustainable finance roadmap. So we're starting with that. Okay. Along those lines, we're also trying to streamline the process of People Survival Fund. So the People Survival Fund is a GAA appropriation of one billion every year okay. for LGUs to access, uh, for them to fund adaptation projects. So, mag-propose ka, tapos i-approve the PSF board. Yung problem natin, not all local government units understand what adaptation means. It's not a simple concept, di ba? So, pa paano nila malalaman saan sila kukuha ng data para alam nila kung ano yung risk exposure nila, depende kung anong probinsya, ano ba yung project na pwede niyang gawin to adapt. Hindi nila alam yun. So we need to do capacity building in that area. And we're trying to streamline since the CCC is now under the DOF because the chairman designate of the CCC is now Secretary Carlos Dominguez. He's trying to streamline yung process ng CCC, lalo na yung People Survival Fund, to help LGUs better access the fund. Especially now, now we are on recovery mode. Gusto natin yung recovery nila, green recovery. Because it will also help them, especially those provinces that are tourism uh, catered or those agriculture dependent. So, doon natin gagamitin yung mga fondo na inallocate na talaga ng Congreso. And it was existing for, uh, I think, almost 10 years now. Wow. So, yun. So, we need to increase yung access ng LG. Okay, so is it safe to say that the Department of Finance is taking the lead on this to to spread the word on sustainable finance and get yes, everybody yes. acting together? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, okay. we're, we're working on that. And uh, uh, Secretary Dominguez, uh, because he used to be also a DA secretary at the DENR, um, he's really pushing forth, uh, for example, your anti-single-use plastics bill. Uh, certain local governments are already successful in uh, implementing this. And we think that if we can actually pass this law, we can lower down the waste natin, yung, the, because the Philippines generates a lot, a lot of waste. And we see this in our seas, in our oceans, in our rivers. So sayang naman, you know, we're blessed with so many beautiful natural wonders. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, the problem of waste is evident. Mm -hmm. So if we can lower down our production of waste, it would really help a lot in terms of uh, sustainable 
uh, projects and financing for sustainable future of the Philippines. Which brings us to our next question, Asek. Uh, the Climate Realty Project Philippines joined the Department of Finance, climate, the Climate Change Commission, and other partners in celebrating Earth Day 2021. Uh, through the webcast Pinasiglang Mundo, which highlighted the country's campaign against single-use plastic, which you just mentioned. Can you tell us what occurred during the celebration? It was a very successful event. We had legislators, we had a lot of NGOs, we have especially the youth, they were very engaged, and uh, it was a good platform for different sectors to exchange their views. No, so we need more understanding, both the private, the public, and your government sectors to come together to really work towards something that will benefit the Filipinos. Mm -hmm. So we say it's successful because you have a lot of youth participating, and that's very important. Mm -hmm. Because, as you know, our population's median age is around 22 to 24. So we have a very young population as compared to other countries like Japan, the mm. UK, the US. Their average age, especially Japan, is quite old. Japan has the most centennial um, inhabitants. So I think their median age is 60 uh, or in that, in that uh, ballpark. And then also for the UK and other developed countries, they're quite in the older age group and their, their population is actually going down. So the Philippines, on the contrary, has a very young population. Mm -hmm. So if our target is to mitigate the effects of climate change by 2030 and 2050 mm -hmm. because of the harsh effects that it will bring, it is the youth of today mm -hmm. who will be living during those times when the consequences of climate change will happen. Mm -hmm. So it's good that they're taking part now because it's their future that we are trying to secure. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a very good turn out. You know, it's very enlightening talaga for me because when, when I found out that we were supposed to interview ASEC Alvarez and Department of Finance, it just mm -hmm. made me think of numbers, money, funding, <laughs> diba. <laughs> and now um, you're talking about sustainability and the climate and how everybody should be really participating in its um, development or progress. I don't know what you call it. But of course, going back, uh, speaking of funding, no? um, the Department of Finance um, recently pitched a new source for a third, a possible third Bayanian law. Ah, tama ba? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you touch on this ASEC? What is oh. that supposed to be for? It wasn't us who pitched the idea. It was mm -hmm. the legislators who okay. wanted the third time we had. Mm -hmm. On our part, we will look into how we're going to fund it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're still looking internally on how we can actually fund it. Um, but uh, of course, if the Congress decides to do it, then we will have to support them. Mm -hmm. But what would be the purpose of this third, possible third Bayanihan law? I think it's still to spur uh, assistance and development, especially to those affected, especially now. You know, we're going to extend it uh, MPCQ. So we understand that we have a lot of uh, Apobayans who, you know, lost their jobs or are really having a hard time in different areas, you know, physically, financially, mentally. So there are really a lot of things that we need to help, but you know, we we we're everyone is pushed against the corner all over the world. We are just uh, in a better position, I guess, because when we entered the pandemic, we had a good, uh, strong fundamentals. I think that's not what a lot of people understand. Yung sinasabi natin na mababa yung debt to GDP ratio natin mm -hmm. and yung credit ratings, the way that they help us is because we have a good financial foundation or macroeconomic policies, mm -hmm. our loans are in better terms than other countries that are not um, in the same credit rating as we are. Mm -hmm. So 
we ne- we were even during the pandemic we were not downgraded so it, it's something that proves how healthy our economy is and how we can bounce back oh that's mm-hmm. good to know <laughs> Mm-hmm. So my next question is related to that aspect. Vaccines have been rolled out. Build, build, build projects are ongoing. How fast, how quickly do you think will we be able to recover? But before you answer that, let's pause for a break. Montero Sport. Elevate your journey. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Fiber is the free and secure way to connect with friends and family anywhere. Send messages and make phone and video calls for free. Download Viber now. back. This is Spotlight. I'm Francine Marquez with my co-host Ms. Dina Ventura and we're talking to finance ASEC Paula Alvarez. So before we had a break, we're asking ASEC Alvarez, how quickly do you think will the economy recover with the vaccine inside and build, build, build projects happening again? Well, I think that's for Secretary Carl Chua. I'm not the okay, okay. but uh, you know, most of the IMF projections, I think, is you know two to three years to fully recover to pre-pandemic mm-hmm. levels. Mm-hmm. But you know, we're not. Um, we're of course we're very hopeful that we're starting to grow mm-hmm. back. I mean, our revenues are increasing, so we have a better positioning as compared to last year. Mm-hmm. So year on year, we're improving, but it's a struggle. Of course, it's a once in a century event. Huh? Mm-hmm. The effect of this pandemic is greater than the two world world wars of that. That's how that's how devastating this pandemic is. But mm-hmm. we're we're trying to fight it. We're staying alive. So hopefully, uh, things get better by next year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, there's some light there. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know. Thank you for um, making it easy for us to understand the kind yes. of work and the Department of Finance yes, is doing. Yes, you know? yes. <laughs> and it's good to know that we're also doing something for our planet, the only place we live in. <laughs> Oh, through sustainable finance. Is to this fund a personal the... advocacy of yours, ASEC? You climate change, yeah. Well, well, of course, I, of course, I I love the you know the tropics. It's our home. I like the beach. I like mm. the mountains and stuff like that. But it just fall upon my lap, so mm. it's a part of my job. So at least it's a good advocacy that it it really has a you can really enact change, right? Yeah. So it makes your job easier because you believe in what you're trying to do. That it's actually helping re- uh, reduce something. Uh, something that's harmful mm. so at least uh, in that I mean I think we should all be advo- advocates of the environment because uh, you know there's no plan B but there's no planet B <laughs> what are we going to do if the Philippines is uh, you know underwater <laughs> there's really <laughs> nothing we can do but to help it rise so you know I think in that sense I'm an advocate of what we're trying to do. 
Yes, oh, I totally agree with that. We should all yes, be advocates yes, of that. Yes. And it's really nice that uh, somebody from a very serious <laughs> department is giving the, a face yes, to this yeah. kind of call. Giving it solid ground yeah. through funding. <laughs> Do you know who ASAC reminds me of? Who? Pia Wurzbach. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. <laughs> Grabe. <laughs> Even the way you talk is like oh. her. <laughs> anyway. Exactly, the voice. Oh, diba? The voice. Asek, the voice. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. It's been a, a pleasure getting to know you, Asek Paula. And yeah. we hope to uh, talk to you again soon and maybe chat about more things about the, what you're doing. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Thank you very much for having me also. I mean, I don't think finance is something that you usually talk about. But thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk to you in a softer tone, I guess. Yeah. Because most of the engagements we have are new segments. <laughs> it's very serious. So oh, uh, it's, it's a very welcome opportunity for us to talk about it in a, in a softer manner mm-hmm. or in a manner more uh, accessible to people who are not finance background. I don't have any finance background, by the way. I'm from the liberal arts, so oh. I just learned. Um, oh, interesting. <laughs> you learned uh, yeah. on the job along the way. Yes, yeah. because if I don't, I'll get fired. So <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah. But I guess that discipline is also part of your, it just yeah. expands your tool for analysis, right? Yes, so because Secretary Dominguez is a very strict boss, and you know, we always need to please him. So if you know, we're on our toes always. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ang galing. Um, I really like this, you know, this show to, this afternoon. Yeah, mm-hmm. Kasi, you know, everybody needs to know about finances and, mm-hmm. you know, sustainable financing. Yes. Especially yes. if very mm-hmm. relevant. Yeah. And so, I guess I if you don't have a clean earth, if you don't have clean earth, then it will also affect our health. Yes. And it, it, What's happening right now is we're in the middle of a health, uh, global health crisis. So that's why climate change still plays a lot. Right? Yes, everything works together yeah. or we should all be working together. As, goes as back, Asek said. Goes back to Mother Earth. Let's be good to her. <laughs> yes. Okay. So thank you okay. very much. Thank so you. thank you again for having me and I hope everyone stays safe and you have a good afternoon. Thank you, and we wish you the same. This is Dina Ventura. And this is Francine Marquez. And And this this has been Spotlight. Spotlight.